Today we begin with uh, the topic of Yang Mills fields because these have become the cornerstone of all of modern physics. And in other words this topic is called non-Ebelian gauge symmetry. What is interesting about this concept is that uh, all the particle physics we know is very elegantly described in terms of this principle. What it does is that uh, it makes all couplings universal, the value of like the electromagnetic charge, the electron charge, value of the electron charge, um, everything else is a multiple of that. So similarly, and therefore all electromagnetic interactions are determined by one charge. Similarly, the weak force and the strong force, so electromagnetism, All the three uh, are described by the same quote symmetry principle and so I should put quote marks on this, I will explain what that means. And what we find is that these two are sort of intertwined, okay. So together they form what we now call electroweak theory. So there is an underlying gauge principle. based on the group SU3C cross SU2L cross U1Y where C is color, this is strong force and these two together give the weak force plus U1 electromagnetism. So this is an advertisement or a trailer if you like of what this topic is all about, okay. So all the, thus all the known forces uh, at terrestrial level are completely described by this particular framework. So let us begin this by seeing what is the usual idea of gauge invariance or the electromagnetism. So before we get to become very sophisticated, let us try to track back what is, uh, how one deduces this and how possibly the first people who made this observation about this kind of symmetry saw this and that starts with the Lorentz force in Lagrangian framework or Hamiltonian framework. So first of all it turns out, so if you see Goldstein's book which is the only one we used to use when we were young, nowadays 
uh, the book has a co-author and it is somewhat rewritten. But if you see Goldstein's book, uh, this occurs fairly early and he shows that that book contains the proof that and it would probably be also there in Landau and Lipschitz's classical mechanics, you know, that uh, to get So, V is x dot to get this right you need a Lagrangian which is of the form T minus Q phi. So, what we do is we propose at this point that E is derivable from a scalar potential right we know that this can always be done Faraday's law and Ampere's law together will allow you to do this and Coulomb's law and uh, sorry and Ampere's law along with uh, divergence b equal to 0 will allow you to write b in terms of a vector potential. In that case using this we can rewrite the Lorentz force in Lagrangian form as the kinetic energy minus q times phi q is the charge plus q over c a dot v and therefore if you find the canonical momentum p uh, x equal to we should write variational derivative then that will be equal to m x dot and uh, plus q over c a x So, the canonical momentum of electromagnetism already has the potentials in it not just the velocities. So, uh, so you can then construct the Hamiltonian out of this Hamiltonian has to be written out by doing P x dot you know and x dot has to be written in terms of P minus Q over C A etcetera. Uh, okay. Writing P x dot minus L. So, you can do the remainder, but the point is the momentum canonical momentum now looks like this. So, in quantum mechanics. we know that p goes to minus i gradient yes and uh, eventually we have to get to a covariant form and there is some mismatch between the way we write here and the covariant notation. So, for example, the gradient operator. So, if we have to write this as a in index notation then the gradient operator is automatically a covariant vector people know co and contravariant right uh, 
contravariants are written with upper index and co with down index mainly to remember whether you are referring what uh, whether you are referring to the original frame of reference or its dual frame of reference so because of this now we write that p <coughs> in electromagnetism what we need is that pi is equal to old pi minus q over c lower ai and as far as i remember there is a, a mixed notation here it turns out that one of these indices is up instead of down okay so if you take x to be the contravariant vector that is right. Uh, this A x is covariant and so there is an opposite sign, but this is the prescription that is that correctly works. So, wherever you see minus i gradient, you replace it by a lower i but that is same as minus i yes um, times so what happens is that at this point we actually have because of this mixed notation it is like this okay. and then what one does is to write uh, co to covariant version so this is sort of the physics notation and <coughs> additionally what happens is that the Hamiltonian gets from the minus l it gets a plus q phi so this also means h goes to old h plus q times a0 and therefore i i d by dt has to be replaced by no for a0 there will not be any sign change so yeah so that becomes equal to i d by d t no sorry so the because of the minus l the q phi appears here um, with plus sign so this is actually minus and right and so I want here eventually plus i q a 0 and modulo whatever sign confusion there is it can be worked out I have checked it once in detail so what we will adopt is that together
and this is what we will be using okay and I think if forced to argue I will say that yeah so this is upper I and that is because um, or when you do this substitution you are supposed to think that it is upper but you have to put a gradient and therefore there is a relative minus sign. But if you do this you can begin by saying this is your prescription okay. The only problem is that you have to check that it reproduces Lorentz force correctly if you started with the idea of describing physics correctly and it does match. So if this is so, so what? Well the interesting point is that uh, this is the way to couple electromagnetism to charges. The coupling between charges and uh, the electromagnetic fields is through this prescription only. Wherever there is a canonical momentum you replace it by canonical momentum uh, plus this uh, contribution from the gauge fields. So in the uh, in quantum mechanics where we have uh, Schrodinger equation where the Hamiltonian begins with 1 over 2 m grad grad square psi it becomes so plus v psi etc but we are not going to use this too long but so we have to then replace it by so this goes over to and there is a minus h cross squared by 2 m. There is h cross somewhere here as well okay. Um, yeah so there will actually be a 1 over h cross here because actually this p goes to h cross gradient. So there is a q c over h cross. Okay, so we can write it once here there is an h cross c but we will not henceforth write it. Now the point is that and this was observation of uh, Herman Weil that uh, we have a gauge invariance in electro we have an invariance in electromagnetism so for the em potentials we have the ambiguity that uh, the vector potentials can be replaced by Yeah, again I am using a mixed notation because that gradient is actually covariant 
from the covariant notation whereas I am writing upper index A's that, that does not matter it is just to observe this the overall sign will not matter. So the point is if you change A by the gradient of a space time function lambda then the curl of the new A is same as curl of old A. So this relation does not change and you can also set phi or A0 and then d by dt probably with a 1 over c uh, probably not d by dt of the same lambda and this works because if you look at the E field we can actually check about the 1 over c etc. because if you take grad uh, if you take d by dt of A it now gets a d by dt of grad lambda. So we can check this quickly whether everything is right you can do it in your notebook on the side. leaving some space here So this works out correctly if we put a 1 over C here right. So <coughs> because of that uh, notational problem with up and down indices I think I need here a plus sign. So we put a plus sign here in any case as we were saying it will not matter. So this will become equal to minus grad A0 minus 1 over C d by dt A and the remaining terms cancel because this is minus 1 over C grad d by dt of lambda with a minus sign and this is plus 1 over C d by dt of grad lambda <coughs> yeah. So you need a plus sign there and a 1 over C in the uh, A0 transformation. Now I have used the word ambiguity which is correct from the good old differential equations point of view because if you wanted to describe some physical fields A and B then you could have come up with some convenient uh, A phi part the A0 part and some convenient vector potentials that would you have to solve these equations right these are first order so given physical E and B you can always find phi and A as solutions of these differential equations <coughs> because um, they are first order differential equations although they are coupled partial differential equations. The point then is that that solution quote will not be unique in fact it will have a huge ambiguity. Uh, this if you have tried to solve PD is first order PD is by substituting into each other you know that unlike putting initial condition in ordinary differential equations here the initial conditions are functions of the variable which is not involved. When you have partial differential equations if you have only d by dx all you know is d by dx of f of x y is equal to x let us say then all you can tell is that therefore f must be equal to um, x 
half x squared plus any g of y right because you do not know what that part is. So, when you are solving them simultaneously the other conditions then help you de determine g, but overall you may be left with a whole functional ambiguity in solutions of such partial differential equations and that is exactly what happens here. You try to find these they are not uniquely determined by these two given conditions or these two equations and so there is a, a functional ambiguity and that you, anyway you observe enters through derivatives it is not directly that there is and there is only one scalar function although there are four components there is only one overall uh, space time the Lorentz scalar function that enters whose derivatives cause an ambiguity in identifying the uh, gauge potentials. So, <coughs> Now, one other thing I just would like you to remember is that a Lorentz scalar is a very strange object. A Lorentz scalar is something you have never seen. All the scalars you know of will transform very strangely if you perform Lorentz transformations. One of our favorite scalar is length, right? It is invariant under rotation. So, we think it is a scalar, but length is not a scal Lorentz scalar. So, most things that you know are actually not going to qualify. In fact, I cannot think of anything that oh well the rest mass, but uh, is a true scalar, but we already give it away because we say rest mass meaning mass in its own frame of reference, which is which anyway reduces to particular choice of frame. So, we do not know any fields space time fields that are scalars until very recently. Uh, it is it's, all I am trying to say is it is somewhat counterintuitive what uh, space time Lorentz scalar would be, but that is what one adds. Okay. Now, that ambiguity is transformed into magically into some kind of a symmetry and that was the observation of Herman Weil. So, Weil said that therefore, The going back to the Schrodinger equation, we know that the wave function has a overall phase problem. So, But now, Herman Weil observes that if for this constant alpha, if you instead put this same lambda 
then it will then you can arrange for this whole object to remain unchanged under this okay so And now we will stop writing Q, etc. Okay. And let me write like this. So, what we do is that we simultaneously let thus if psi goes to e raised to i times q times lambda. then d mu x d mu psi will go to i q d mu times psi d mu lambda plus uh, uh, times psi plus d mu psi times e raised to i q lambda x right so I think this is and now <coughs> then like we used to do in high school d mu uh, yeah d mu plus i q a mu multiplied by psi will go over to so here you can multiply this on the left and right by e raised to i q lambda without any loss of generality because this is just an algebraic expression there is no uh, derivative. Therefore, adding both the sides I will get that when I add these two the d mu psi here sorry the i q d mu lambda will exactly cancel with minus i q d mu lambda from the gauge field shift and I will simply get Now, when you take this and put it here that e raised to i lambda will come here i q lambda is the charge unit has to be put in yeah. This again will act on it this combination, but this combination again will remain unchanged because a will have shifted and you can bring the overall phase all the way here. 
and this psi also has the same phase. So, you can throw away that same phase, the whole Hamiltonian has changed by only an overall phase the psi, or you can just replace the psi by that new psi with a space time dependent phase, it will not change the Hamiltonian. Okay. Uh, in covariant notation it gets even better because it actually even cancels as we will see for scalar fields. Uh, thus, with electromagnetic coupling, and above changes in about transformations of psi of x as well as e raised to i q lambda x psi x describe the same system. Okay. And so, this is the statement of gauge invariance. 